you want to join it, you can just uh, tap the link and it's fine. So, welcome to our online webinar, Craft Bar Skills, Body, Mind and Emotions. Thank you very much for coming, guys. So, I do it for you and uh, it's a great pleasure that you're here, you're online. So, I have someone <laughs> to talk with. Yeah. So, that's why I thank you so much. Thank you so much. Today, I would like to explain some moments about what is craft bar skills, why uh, our bartending skills can help us a lot in our, um, uh, in our everyday life. Yeah. So how these uh, just easy skills, yeah, just easy skills with uh, our bar tools can help to improve our, our cognitive skills and our psych emotional skills. So today we will talk a bit about the brain, how it works. So. Um, of course, we don't know everything about the brains. I'm a certified neuropsychologist, but uh, even from the science knowledge, I know that uh, it's still not everything known about the brain. We have a lot of knowledge about it, but it's still a lot to discover, yeah? But some, some patterns we know already, and it's great to know as well, because um, if we are talking about the skills, there are another um, word, which is meta skills. So meta skills, it is like knowing about knowledge. So knowing about knowing. So I know what I know, or I know what I don't know anything, yeah? Like <laughs> as Aristotle told before. So that's why when we know how it works, it's easy to understand like how to improve it or how to practice uh, more efficiently or how to um, get skills faster. That's why I discover um, uh, this topic and I study a lot about it and still continue. And I think for uh, next years, I will continue a lot. And uh, during this time, I'm studying mind fitness and in a couple of months I will be a mind fitness trainer and it is the next stage so uh, for those who are attending our course I will share as well uh, some very interesting exercises to, um, uh, to practice your mind yes to practice your cognitive skills together with your bar skills yeah so this is our topic for today let's start and let me uh, tell a couple of uh, words about myself my name is Vitaly I think you know it very well, Vitaly Kolpin, I'm from Russia, based in St. Petersburg, but always traveling, yes, and uh, for the last uh, 16, yeah, almost 17 years, yeah, I've been bartending, and uh, for the last, uh, I think, about eight years, uh, I've been studying about the brain, how it works, because my aim during bartending life was to find the way how to control uh, my... Um, my state, how to control my emotions, how to control my um, kind of behavior, yeah? So, because uh, I compete a lot before uh, the flavor bartending competition, and it all, always was a question for me. When I go to the stage, um, one day I feel very comfortable, like a lion, I'm ready to, you know, to break the stage. The second day I go there, and I'm like a mouse. I don't know what to do there. So I'm shaking. And this was the, uh, what was a, uh, it was a question for me. Like, so can I control it or it just you know it's just a situation? Yeah. So um, last uh, I think three it was it happened, yeah four years ago I found the way how to control it. So more or less I mean it's impossible to control everything, but more or less I found the way how to rule it, how to rule emotions, how to um, uh, how to control your state on the stage, uh, actually it doesn't matter where, behind the bar or the big stage, TV show stage, doesn't matter where. So uh, it, is, it is also a skill and everybody can improve it. So my aim just to share this knowledge as well with you because uh, it's uh, quite interesting to know. And uh, to be honest, it changed my life a lot. So I was quite shy person before, and it wasn't so easy for me to do something on the stage or to do something for other people. Yeah, uh, especially when I'm talking, for example, in foreign language, not in my language, because I'm not so perfect in English. Yeah, but at the same time, I changed my mind a lot just with this knowledge, and uh, it brought me to the position where I am now. So. My dream was to 
travel all around the world. And two years ago, I made my dream true. So I traveled all around fifth continents, not every country, but fifth continents. And uh, trust me, I'm not the richest person in the world. <laughs> so I, my family is uh, very normal. So nothing very special. I didn't have uh, possibilities for, for it, but just with those knowledge and th this passion. So I made my dream true. And I would like to share something with you as well. So let's start. And first of all, I would like to introduce my very good friend. And I'm pretty sure that it will be a good friend of you as well. Yeah, just a moment. Uh-huh. Ah, okay, so. Mm -hmm. So do you know this guy? If anyone, if anyone saw this, he's, uh, I don't know, maybe heard about it, no? So this is my very good friend and I'm pretty sure that it will be your good friend as well. Yeah, it is uh, homunculus, homunculus of Dr. Penfield. Yeah, okay, so this spoon and this jigger, I draw there. It is not the original one, but all the rest is, is original. Uh, it is kind of the map of our brain. It is kind of the map of our brain, yeah? So this uh, picture shows us how our brain understand our body in movements. I mean, for example, I can show you, this is our brain, yeah? Almost the same like mine. So this is a prototype of our brain. And you can see, you can see here, this strip, yeah? Red one, the red one, the red one, yeah? So this is the motor cortex, motor cortex, where neurons send signals to our parts of the body to move. So for example, when I move my fingers, here are some neurons which send the signal the fingers, yep. So that's why this picture shows how parts of the brain located in, in our brain. So for example, you can see uh, this picture that we have uh, here, big hands, very big hands, very big fingers, also each face. So it means that in this part of the brain where these neurons located, yeah. For example, our hand takes a big part of it so the huge part of it our face takes a huge part of it and all the rest is just a third part of it yeah so third part of our motor cortex control our hands makes sense yeah so quite a big question why because uh, the body is so huge hands not so big but why our brain see it like this very interesting question. And um, Dr. Penfield, who is a Canadian scientist, uh, studied it uh, about 50, uh, 70 years ago. It's already about 70 years ago. And he found that our brain sees our body like this. So what does it mean? It means that uh, when we do something with our fingers, it takes a lot of energy from our brain. That's why it's not so easy. Uh, I think you had this experience when you start to practice some finger exercises, yeah? When you start to practice, it takes a lot of energy. Even we don't move too much, but it takes a lot of energy. So movement, which based on small mobility, takes really a lot of energy. Yeah, because it takes a huge energy from our brain, yeah? So, but um, it's a quite good. Um, it's quite the property of our brain that uh, you're always trying to save an energy. Yeah, you don't want to lose energy for anything, and uh, just uh, especially when it when he I, I will call him he. Okay, our brain I will call him he when he don't understand why should I do it. For example, any new skills, um, any new skills, it is not so understandable information for the brain. That's why he start to uh, he trying to avoid it and stop it. Don't lose energy for nothing. So that's why when we start to practice with some skills, yeah, it takes a lot of energy and we can even get some, um, uh, some emotions, like not, not very, 
pleasant emotions, yeah, just uh, those emotions which can stop us. I mean, kind of aggressiveness, kind of um, uh, okay, aggressiveness is enough, yeah, at the moment. So, uh, those emotions which we don't like, yeah, so it's stop us. Yeah. So, uh, but at the same time, if we understand it, if we understand how it works, then it will be easier to make step forward. So that's why this picture is quite interesting for us as a bartender. We use a lot, a lot our fingers. So that's why when you use your fingers, you also make good exercise for the brain. I mean, uh, it's kind of mind fitness and I will explain it a bit later, uh, a bit more about it, yeah? So the next picture shows us that we have three brains, yeah? So it's, it's not real like a three brains. We have one big brain and that's all, but it's kind of metaphor, yeah, that we have three brains. Uh, the one which we can see here is a orange or probably you can see it as a yellow. Yeah, it is kind of reptilian brain. So uh, the brain we got from reptilians, yeah. And uh, this part of the brain, actually this part of the brain, yeah, is um, responsible for instincts and urge. Yeah, so quite important, uh, quite important processes, uh, which allows us to breathe, which allows us uh, don't think about heartbeat and the breathing. So many other details, but uh, today we will talk about different stuff. Yeah, so then another one, the red one, limbic brain. So limbic brain inside of a brain, it is right, right here inside. When we take off cortex, neocortex, yeah, there is a limbic system inside which is responsible, which is responsible for our emotions, motivation, also uh, control of which signals goes in our consciousness. Yeah, so very interesting part as well. Yeah, and uh, this is what we got from, from animals as well. Yeah, then the next one, like a third part or probably the main part of our brain, yeah, it is our neocortex, neocortex, yeah? So this part of the brain, which is just on, on top of the brain, yeah? Under the skin and other, under the, uh, inside the head, yeah? So, and this part, which makes us actually real humans. Here are a lot of processes uh, which only people have. I mean, for example, thinking, conscious thinking, yeah, then uh, decision making, then talking, reading. So, all these processes based here. Also, for example, small mobility movements based here. Actually, most of the movements also based here. I will describe a bit later where and how it goes, but um, this is also important to understand. Okay, we go forward. And today we will talk about arbitrary motion. So the motions, um, uh, which is uh, kind of new skills for us, yeah? When we have to think about the motions. So for example, we have another one like uh, local, local motions when we just walking or running. So we don't need to think every time about, okay, I have to move my hand, then my leg, then again, my hand, then my leg. So I don't need to think about it, yeah? But when you start to practice with some objects like uh, bar tools and you start to make some movement, yeah, you have to think about it, yeah, because it's not so easy to understand from the first step. Yeah, that's why th this movement uh, we call um, arbitrary motion and there are three steps which is important to understand. So every, every movement starts from our, uh-huh, Frontal, frontal lobe, so here, or on the picture, you can see it, uh, the step number one, yeah? The step number one, frontal cortex, or it is just in here, where all the processes, I mean, uh, decision-making, thinking, happening, yeah? So every step starts from here. First of all, we just choose the program we're going to do. So for example, I want to make, some movement with the jigger, uh, like movement number three, yeah? So I call it movement number three and uh, now a program you'll understand what I mean, yeah? So movement number three, first I make decision here. Then the second step, the signal goes to pre-motor cortex, 
it is right before this red line and this part choose what i will use what i will use for example i will use my hands i will use my fingers so for example only two fingers and then from here the next step it sends a signal to our motor cortex yeah so what to do what to do yeah and this is how how it works yeah so when we start to just to practice it's a different process from uh, when i know this movement very well for example now i do this movement and i can still continue talking i can still uh, continue for example uh, talk with my guests or discuss some other topics or even count yeah how much i pull there yeah so but if i didn't practice it till i understood it then this process takes also an energy and i have to concentrate there so it's a bit different process that's why one of the most important thing when you start to practice when you start to practice put all your attention put all your attention on the movement because it starts from here i mean when you start to practice some new skill it's better to concentrate only on the skill don't watch tv don't talk with anybody so more energy you will bring more concentration you will bring for your uh, training faster you will get the skill yeah concentration when you start to practice is one of the key to get your skills faster this is just a normal law yeah normal law of our brain yeah the, then um, uh, another step uh, I, I told already about it, yeah. So uh, then later when you practice more and more, more and more, more and more. So there are also two more objects which also help us to control any movement of our uh, body, especially uh, small mobility. This is our basal. Uh, uh, basal glanda, basal glanda, and mm -hmm, and cerebellum. Yeah, so cerebellum. So, and those two parts also every time check what they are doing. So, they check, 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 and also trying to remember it. Yeah, and when they understood how to do, it is like a small program goes to cerebellum. Yeah, goes to cerebellum. Yeah, here. Yeah, and there is a program next time when I, for example, when I decide to make some movement with the jigger number three, and this program already here, yeah, the signal from the, from the uh, frontal cortex goes straight to the cerebellum and it activates the program. Like, so I don't need to concentrate too much on this movement. I hope you understand. The cerebellum is one of the uh, best thing what can happen with with us because we uh, we can make this uh, small programs, uh, put it there, and then just use it behind the bar. This is how our movements uh, uh, actually uh, program in there. Yeah. So there we go. There we go. So you can see this brain again. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I told already how it goes. You can see this motor cortex, yeah, motor cortex, which also shown here. Then you can see on the right side from the motor cortex, it is a red line, yeah, or even pink line. And on the right side from uh, from motor cortex, there is another one which is uh, the sensor cortex. So it is about touching, pressure. So always control how we touch, how we press. To the jigger and when you practice as well uh, one one of uh, thing what i also talking to my uh, students that the best way to practice is relaxed and concentrated body so relaxed and concentrated body so no tension nothing like okay let's do it let's do it no. relaxed and concentration body concentrated body sorry yeah so because actually this is very interesting moment so when I when I found it, I understood for myself that why this works like this. So uh, I think you know mm, that we have uh, different mm, neurotransmitters, yeah. So neurotransmitters in our brain, and very interesting fact that uh, in cerebellum there are much more 
disactivating neurotransmitters, I mean, which stops signals. So the main thing for us is not to activate some movement, but to stop movement we don't need. That's why when you just start to practice, when you start to practice, yeah, when you start to practice, a lot of different movements come and it's not easy to get the movement, yeah? So more relaxed, your body will be easier for you, you'll get this movement, for example, yeah? So when you just start to make this movement, okay, movement number three with the jigger, one, two, three, three steps movement, yeah? So you, you start to make this movement and first you're trying to struggle your muscles, yeah? You, you want to make a stronger control everything, but at the same time when you muscles, then yeah, it's not easy to control it. So that's why the best way to practice every time I will repeat and repeat it, repeat it and repeat, relax, relax and relax. So someone use some, you know, different stuff for it to, <laughs> to relax. I don't recommend to use anything, just uh, it's easy to control your body, starting from your brain. If you feel tension, just shake it or take for rest. Yeah, if you want, just uh, smoke cigarette or uh, drink a tea or uh, drink a tea or water, and then continue, continue again. Because when we are uh, under the stress or when we have tension muscles, then it is not so easy to practice these skills, especially our finger mobility skills. Yeah. Okay. We go forward and one more time. I would like to show you this map. Yeah. Here, so you can see how our parts of our our, our, our body located in our brain. So you can see that our hand, our hand is almost third part of this motor cortex. This is a very interesting moment. So that's why, for example, uh, neuropsychologists and uh, neuroscientists, they advise um, and for uh, children and for adult people also to practice some small mobility movements. For example, uh, playing different instruments. Uh, then, for example, I will answer question a bit later, okay? Yeah, so playing different instruments, um, doing some stuff with your hand, yeah? So use your hand as much as possible. The same like about our face muscles. So our speech is movements of our face muscles. And when we study, for example, foreign languages, it's also quite, uh, quite um, useful for our brain. Yeah, it's also quite useful to make it um, kind of stronger, yeah? So it's just because you can see how it works in our motor cortex. So it takes a huge part of the uh, motor cortex, just uh, fingers and our face. So as a bartenders, we can make some conclusions that we are very lucky because we use our fingers a lot. Yeah, we use our hands a lot. So a lot of movements based on our hands, yes? And we have to talk a lot as well, yeah? So then uh, we have a lot of connection with people, not probably during this uh, COVID period, but as usually, yeah, we have this um, uh, opportunity to talk a lot and even watch face to face. What is also very important for us because it's always an information. We, uh, we have uh, neuro neurons also which um, copy, which copy, for example, of face movement of other person as well. So, and it activate brain every time. This is, uh, it calls social intelligence, uh, the opportunity and actually ability to, to have some connection with other people, yeah. So, again, you can see our homunculus. On the right side, it is a motor homunculus and on the left side, it is sensory homunculus or somatosensory common tools. So you can see they're almost, they're almost the same, maybe some difference in the face, lips for our sensory information more important than for muscle information. Yeah, and uh, on the left uh, picture where the sensory, you can see now that we have ears there, yeah? So there are ears. And then in the motor uh, homunculus, we don't have ears. It means um, <laughs> we can't move our ears. Yeah, I can do 
some exercise, but <laughs> that's all. That's all I can, yeah. So it was a small introduction in our topic because um, as I told you before, if we understand what we are doing and what, why we, do we do it, then it is easy to, make, to motivate yourself. So every time, every time when you practice, just remember that it is not only a good way to be Come like very fancy bartender or famous bartender or the best bartender. It's a way to practice your brain. So it's a kind of mind fitness. Yeah. Uh, as a neuropsychologist, I spoke with my colleagues and uh, they approved it that yes, when you practice uh, with your fingers, you activate your brain a lot. Yeah. You actually, it's quite good exercise for your brain. Doesn't matter if you use piano. Also, probably even more amazing exercise because there you connect also hearing, yes, then independent movement of your fingers, then also um, understanding of the music. Here, yeah, we use only fingers, but at the same time, when I practice, for example, I always use music and I'm trying to, um, to, to do it according to the music, yeah, according to the sound, yeah. Uh, I will explain it a bit later. So that's why I collect all this knowledge in this program and also uh, brought it to some uh, exercises. And uh, what is actually craft? Yeah. So uh, we will go to our technical part first. Yeah. So craft. I think you know it much better than me. Uh, something like handmade or is um, a limited amount of something yeah but at the same time for me it is like a formula for any movement so if it is like a filter yeah if it goes and i say okay through all this filter then okay i accept this movement for my bar work if not then i think like okay so probably it could be nice for practicing but not for my work yeah so first of all okay uh, we will go one by one letters and then explanation C, creative. So what does it mean to be creative? Yeah, creativity is a, a huge question for everybody, I think, because many people want to be creative, but I don't want to tell everything about, uh, about this. But one important thing that creativity based, mostly based on the skills we have before. So uh, no one can create something uh, unexpected if he never, used before some of the parts of this new information. As usually, it is this different information which combines together. Sometimes it's just um, a situation when neurons goes like, like this, yeah? But as usually, it is a, a lot of neuro, uh, uh, like a neural lines, yeah? Which connect together and then you create something new. So when we're talking about our bar, um, uh, bar skills and when we're talking about some movements, um, creativity is a huge question because, for example, when I use just thumb roll, yeah, so thumb roll with the jigger. So for most of you, it is not creative at all because you can do it or maybe you saw it a lot of times. Yeah, when you do it behind the behind your guests then probably for them, or sorry, in front of a guest, then probably for them, it could be even creative because they don't understand what's going on there. They can only see like, wow, something moving there, yeah? So that's why creativity is a big question, yeah? So uh, then for example, another movement, yeah? So for most of you, it's also quite understandable one, yeah? But for someone also probably very creative, yeah? Then I can continue with some other movement, yeah? With throw and catch, so. Now it goes more or less creative, yeah? Then I can uh, do some, some stuff with two jiggers, for example, yeah? So then it goes more or less creative, yeah? Then I can grab third one. So I know you have a big question, why do I do it? And I completely agree, so what the reason to do this movement, yeah? So behind the bar, probably I will never use this uh, movement, but it happened with me on the competition uh, where I've got a prize for, uh, as remember, 1,000 US dollars. So um, uh, we had three, cocktail, uh, three cocktails to, to prepare, yeah? And uh, I had three jiggers and uh, uh, there were three different syrups which I have to pour. And I didn't have an opportunity to clean. 
my jiggers. Yeah. So I didn't have an opportunity to turn it because otherwise I can get some spills here. And this is a syrup. If I spill on shaker or somewhere, not the best uh, for me. Yeah? So that's why I decided to use two jiggers just to grab third one. So it was just an idea, but everybody was just, wow. Yeah, they were shocked and they even hands. So why not? Probably in this situation, it was reasonable. But behind the bar, if I will do the same every time, probably I will get some question. Yeah, so if I use two jiggers, sometimes it's still, um, I'm traveling a lot and I see that it still seems very creative. So uh, why do I use two jiggers? It depends on the situation. For example, in some bars, in some bars, you have a big distance between bar top, yes, and standing position. And every time you have to move like this, yeah, you have to move like this. So in the middle of the night, you can feel a huge pain in your back. And I think probably it happened with you as well. Yeah. So probably, I hope no, but <laughs> probably. Yeah. So to avoid this every time movement, I can use two jiggers, for example, to make double pull. Yeah. To make a double pull. So pull, pull, and then one movement forward. So boom, boom, one movement forward. So for example, even I want to make a die create, I can pull around, then I can pull 30 ml of uh, lime juice, yeah, then 50 or 20 ml of sugar syrup, and then just go forward. So pull cocktail inside, and then I just make this pull. So then other reason, probably you have a huge bar, there's a lot of stuff there, and you have to go there to take something. So if you, if you go there to take one bottle from this side, one bottle from that side, then you bring it here, then you start to pour from one jigger, then you have to go back. So other way, you can go there, pour, go there, pour, come back and pour. So there are different reasons. And um, uh, when, I, when we're talking about some skills, I always remind about like, if we do something, what the reason? The reason could be not just useful, um, useful uh, movements, but the reason could be like, probably to get some emotions from your guests. Why not? If it doesn't take uh, too much time, why not? Yeah, so, but this is one of the uh, stuff. So to be creative doesn't mean to be from other planet. It is just also different skills. It is not about the difficulty. It is more about um, also perception and your previous knowledge with which we can combine and uh, then you can produce uh, some new information. So for example, I know many guys who also practice uh, with my program and then they create some very interesting movements or they combine from uh, different people, yeah, different information and then they create something something new. Why not? This is, uh, this is also the way, yeah. So I think you got it. Then wrap it. So uh, what, what does it mean to be rabbit? When we use, for example, um, yeah, shake a movement, yeah? So it doesn't mean to do the movement as fast as possible, yeah? It doesn't mean to do it like the fastest way, or, yeah? It doesn't mean to be the fastest one in the world, but it means if you do some movement, there should be a balance between what you want to show and what people, really ready to accept or how long time they are ready to wait. Sometimes it takes a long, yeah, to even to grab shaker. So sometimes we want to play with the shaker, pam, 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 pam. And then I can get a question, hey man, please, come on, give me a cocktail, please, yeah? So if I do it every time like this, then I can get some question. But if I do just a small movement, I will never give, get this question. Uh, because I had experience all around the world with different people, with different uh, cultures, with different perceptions, but I was never asked like, hey, stop, please don't do it. Just uh, give me a drink. No, because in our perception, it seems like even faster if you just take the shaker like this, yeah? So you can see that there is not the feeling about the difference. I mean, in timing, probably there are 
couple more microseconds uh, that could be uh, longer. The second, uh, the second movement could be longer. Yeah? But at the same time, it seems even faster because again, this is how our neurology works, how our mirror system works. Yeah? When there is some movement, it is like a constant irritant. So it takes our attention and we don't think about time. When there is just a slow movement, so our nervous system, according to this movement, also starting to take some rest. Of course, it depends also on the bar you work. For example, if it is a restaurant or if it is a kind of a hotel bar, yes, and you don't want to disturb people, yeah, you don't want to disturb people, they uh, come here just to take rest, to relax, and there is a music, and probably piano or some uh, kind of this uh, music. If you start to move there, and especially if you break something, so it will disturb them a lot. So that's why it's better to avoid there. And uh, if I work in the restaurant, for example, for me, uh, probably some guest shift, yeah? So for me, the most, what can I do is just two-step movement probably, yeah? When I don't throw anything, just two-step movement with the jigger, then some nice pours, yeah? Some nice pours. Not too many, but it still looks nice. Yeah, it still looks technical. It still looks uh, as a professional bartender. Yeah, I don't want to say that you have to do this. Sometimes it's just easy pour could be much better than anything else. Yeah, but at the same time, the pour from the bottle, the standing position, it is also perception of your professionality. So this one, one more time, rapid to be fast. It doesn't mean to be as fast as possible with your movements. It is a balance between time you spend for the movement and the time your guests ready to wait. So this is just my opinion about it. Probably you have another opinion, but this is mine, yeah. So there we go, astonishing. So um, movement which, which brings some emotions to our guests. Wow, this is what we are talking every time. So we do all our job mostly to bring some emotions to our guests. Also for ourselves as well, yeah? Because without emotions, we couldn't live. So this is one of the easiest way how to get some emotions, yeah? I mean, um, this is one of the easiest way to show your technicality, yeah? And impress your guests. Easy way, very easy way. You don't need to throw a lot, yeah? You don't need to make some not confident movement which can also uh, be dangerous behind the bar. It depends on the bar again, yeah? So it depends on the situation. In some bars, it's, it's just a part of your work, but at the same time, you don't need a lot. So you can impress just with movement with your fingers. So uh, also one more point, uh, please don't tell it everybody because probably people don't understand it correctly. Yeah, but when you use your fingers, when you use your fingers, so ladies, special ladies, uh, see it as sexuality. Sexuality, yeah, yeah, baby. So yeah, uh, I don't know why, probably you're very skillful with some movement. I don't know why, <laughs> but this is just a perception. So for example, um, uh, pianists and uh, some musicians, they look already sexual because they use their fingers a lot. So this is just our perception now brain. So nothing very special. So to gain some emotions, to astonish people, this is part of our job. So we were trying to do it with our cocktails. We are trying to do with interior. Yeah, We are trying to do it with some other stuff like bubbles, uh, foam, then different techniques. Uh, at the same time, we can do it with our bar techniques. I mean, uh, this easy stuff with jigger, with the spoon, yeah, boom, boom, boom. I can easily grab the spoon and make a store. From the other, other side, I can do the same. So I didn't spend more time for it, but I do the same, but with some nice movement. 
Yeah. So it, it happened with me um, a lot of times, and uh, one situation was quite interesting. So it was a guest shift in Novosibirsk in uh, my friend's uh, friend's bar, which actually calls uh, friend's bar. Yeah. So I was working there, and um, I started to do some cocktail, uh, made the movement, and there was a lady, and I see that she watched me, and I was like, "What do you do?" And she asked me like. What, is, what have you done? I like nothing. I just took my spoon. That's all. Like, mm, okay. Then I start to see with my back view, yeah, that she is watching me. She's following me. And the next time I took my spoon just like this, and watch, <laughs> and watch there. And she was like, hmm, strange. Okay. Then next time, so I see that she's still watching me, and I made this movement, and she was like ah you made this movement before like yeah what's what's the problem no it was so beautiful why you don't uh, why you didn't uh, uh, show it to me I like <laughs> i do it every time and we start to talk and actually she uh, then she she was waiting for her friends to go to the table but uh, when uh, her friends came she told them like hey guys stop 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 uh, let's stay here behind the bar because he was like a very nice bartender so let's stay here and they drank uh, there were uh, six of them so everyone drank four cocktails so from one moment I brought to the bar 24 cocktails. So, uh, of course, sometimes it even can, um, uh, you know, how to say it in English, um, it can irritate in a bad way, yeah, if you do a lot of movements there behind the bar. That's why uh, it should be some balance. So, you know, this balance much better than me. And as for me, for example, it is very different everywhere like if you work behind some bar in a hotel as i told you before yeah probably just a, some poor some easy technique but still elegant yeah slow movement probably yeah um, mostly stirring technique if you work in, in a cocktail bar yeah probably more movements but still not as a show time yeah if you work in a club or maybe in a um, in a beach club or in a beach bar, why not? People want to have some fun as well. And probably it's the best way to show your skills there, like some player skills. Yeah, not just uh, use jigger. So, uh, but also throw some uh, bottles, so probably some sequences with bottle and tin for different stuff. That's why it's always, it's always a balance, yeah? Then functional, so F, functional. Um, if there is no function to make the movement i am trying to avoid it so for example uh if i want to grab two jiggers my second one uh -huh. if i want to grab one jigger and then i put just in one so why do i do it i have a question for myself so why do i do it if i for example throw in jigger pump 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 and then just bring it here and over and again i have a question for myself why do I do it? So that's why uh, not to lose the speed of your work and uh, uh, don't make these questions. So every time when I do some movement, I understand why I do it. For example, if I want to change position of the jigger, you can see there is a small part, here is a big part, yeah? If I want to change position of the jigger, I will do this movement very quick, and you can see that I change position of the jigger, yeah? So other way, how can I change it? I change position of the jigger and I change actually a grip, yeah? So of course I can do like this, <laughs> no problem at all. Yeah? But you can also see how elegant it is, yeah? And um, for example, I don't want to change position. I need this position, yeah? So I save position of the jigger, yeah? or even thumb roll, I change position of the jigger. Yeah? So uh, every time when I think about the movement, I think first of all, why do I do it? So the movement with the bar stool, I showed you before, I also can do it different ways. The first, the first step, you can see that this bar is done, and then bam, 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 
Guys, please turn, turn off the sound. Turn off the sound, yeah. Because otherwise, it's, yeah, thank you. It's not easy to hear me, yeah? So, pam, 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 and it's still there, yeah? So, if I want to change position of the spoon, it's almost the same movement, but you can see that I changed position. Oh, sorry. That I changed position of the spoon. So, and now I can do, again, the serve. So, for example, I can use this movement not to change or to change position. So almost the same, but I didn't finish with one step. So during our program, I also explained it very well how it works. Yeah, so every time I'm thinking about also some uh, functional stuff, yeah, and, um, mm -hmm. and let me go here. Even with shakers, for example, if I do a couple of movements and pump, yeah. So again, I change position of shaker. Yeah. If I make this one, pump, pump, I change position of shaker. Otherwise, I can change it like this. That's also fine. It's up to you. But you see the filter and you can decide for yourself. Then technical. This is uh, mostly, uh, I mean, that all this movement based on a very similar techniques. For example, the first movement, pam, pam, pam. The second one, pam, pam, pam. Yeah. Uh, next one, pam, pam, pam. Yeah. Then next one, pam, pam, pam. Yeah. Uh, the next one, uh, pam, pam. Yeah. The next one, mm -hmm. uh, okay, like this. Pam. Yeah. So another one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all this movement based on the same movement, only four steps, one, two, three, and four. So then it is a different combination of these movements. That's all. So when we are talking about movements, I don't like to teach uh, like how to do my movements. We are talking about techniques, how it works, why it works like this, why uh, you, why it's better to save position of your hand because if you bend your hand, then you lose the power of movement. Yeah. So the power of movement. Yeah. So that's why why is better to safe position of your hand. So we're talking about biomechanics, biomechanics of our body and about physics. This is a technical stuff. Uh, also, it is not just about movement, but, but if you do just a force, um, like two different pulls. The one yeah, and the second one. So I think you can see the difference and you can feel the difference, yeah? That the second one looks more confident, kind of this stuff. But why? Why does it look like this? Yeah, straight position of your body. The straight position of your body. One very small but very important secret. When I see the pull like this, it's nothing bad. But at the same time, you can see that when you just uh, keep your body straight, yeah. It looks more professional or probably more uh, confident. Yeah. So again, it is not about um, my rules or something like this. It's about our perception. That's all. So, and here is a small secret: the position of your hand when you make this pull. Yeah. The one position is just like like this. Another one is like this. I know that uh, American Barton is cool, and for example, uh, many Italian school the teach it and mostly uh, when I travel around Italy I, and actually a lot of Italians whom I met around the world, they using this kind of grip and this is one of the most universal grip and very elegant grip, yeah? So probably when you just start, not easy to understand how, how it goes, but uh, when you understood, then it helped you to keep your body straight, yeah? So all the rest, uh, the world 
sorry if I don't want to, uh, I don't want to say that some, someone <laughs> do it badly, yeah, but mostly the people poor like this. And you can see a lot of videos when they poor like this. So again, nothing bad. Just remember about perception, remember about position. If you make a thousand of these poors, then just try to touch your back. So you can see the difference you can see the difference in your muscles, yeah? Because every time when I move to the left, my left side doesn't work, but the right side is quite tension, uh, tended, yeah? So the same happening with the wrist. The wrist is the um, wrist, I mean, uh, not the strongest one part of our hand, yeah? So it's easy to break it. It's easy to uh, make it hurt. So that's why, it's better to save position of your wrist. So for example, if you even do some push-ups, yeah? So good trainers, they suggest not to do like this, but to do like this, yeah? So, because it's easy, it's very easy to break it. There are a lot of uh, uh, neuro uh, paths which goes through wrist and if you break it then you can get a lot of problems with your fingers as well yeah so that's why it's better to save position almost straight every time when you make this pull and this position also helps to make a lot of different ways how to pull i mean this is just a universal position i don't want to say that this is correct position this is just a universal position yeah so for example uh with this with this grip i can do just a normal pull doesn't matter with bubble or without bubble, yeah? Then I can do this, I, I call it inside cut when the bottle goes inside, yeah? So also easy. Or I can easily do this outside cut, yeah? So when the bottle goes outside, outward, yeah? I can easily use it on top of the bar, for example, yeah? So pump and then pump, yeah? Or if I see that there is something, so I don't want to use this, uh, I don't want to move it forward. So if there is something, maybe glass or maybe face of your guest, so I can easily change the movement inside. So um, this is again, not about the style, not just about the style, but it also about very useful technical stuff, which helps us to understand how to move it more in a more useful way, yeah. And it's still, it's still quite elegant. So, and very important moment that we are talking about these skills, not about like a talent of bartender. So it probably looks like a talent. Uh, last week I was invited for another uh, Russian TV show, uh, Games of Talents. Yeah, so, and I asked them like, <laughs> what do you see as a talent for me? And they're like, everything you do is a talent. And I want to explain them, this is not a talent, but okay, I, uh, it is a TV show. I understand that this is another, another, uh, another talk, yeah? So, but actually this all are bar skills. So I'm pretty sure, and I made my international experience that everybody can get these skills easily. I mean, if just to understand how to practice and if to, of course, to take a time for it, yeah? To invest your time in, um, in practicing. So one more time, what food are we doing? Yeah, so work in competitions. Uh, during your work, it is a good contrast irritant. I mean, everything what we uh, perceive is, is a contrast irritant. For example, if there is some light, which lighting, yes, it is contrast irritant for our nervous system, yeah? So if there is some sound, it is contrast irritant for our body and our tensions, our tension goes there. So for example, very easy example, if someone want to tell something, yeah, during, for example, with dinner, he make it attention, please. So yeah, when we make this movement, when we make this movement, this is also kind of contrast irritant for people. Yeah. So they don't understand what's going on there, but it takes their attention. So if we don't do it so long, then it is a good way just to take attention and then easy to 
continue your conversation or probably start to talk yeah so then uh with this practicing with different kind of exercises also what i've uh, what i uh what i've heard it from my students as well yeah that um probably you're not going to use this movement behind the bar but you feel more confident yeah just for example in the grip because every time when you practice your fingers, it is not just movements, it's also touching, it is sensory information. And then your fingers understand much better how to grab it and feel much better and more comfortable. That's all. And um, also it helps a lot during the competition. Yeah. Uh, as we were talking before, it also establish contact. And when people see some small movement, doesn't matter what you do, yeah, pom pom pom, or maybe with the spoon. If it is like, if you're very confident with this move, movement, then straight to the head, it goes like, wow, professional. So they don't know nothing about your knowledge, your real bartending knowledge, yeah, but they can perceive it as, wow, professional. So uh, one more time, I want to tell that this is not the main skill you, you have to have, but this is a very nice additional skill which can help you to uh, get this uh, professional label, kind of professional label. But one more time, uh, I repeat and repeat that this is not the main thing. So uh, it was, in my opinion, it was a mistake of a lot of player bartenders. Then, um, uh, when, when they think that if you can throw the bottle, then you are the best one in the world, yeah? So, for some people, it could be like this. But if we work in a cocktail bar, we, we can have different opinions about it, yeah? So, one more time. These skills is not the main skills you have to have, but it can help you to be more professional or to look more professional. Yeah, and it's easier, easier to get trust, to get trust from your guests. I mean, doesn't matter which sphere of life, but people trust professionals, and it's easy to uh, to trust professionals, and it's easy to give him a choice. I mean, when they come to the bar, you know it much better than me. So mostly people don't understand the cocktails and they don't know what they want. So we want to ask them, what would you like to drink, like sweet and sour or just, just some bitter? Mostly they will tell you what they know. For example, they know Negroni, Negroni, yeah, Negroni, yeah, or just uh, Daiquiri, Daiquiri, because I tasted last time, the light was good, yeah. But when they see that you're professional, they can easily ask you, like, what would you recommend? Or if they know that this bar in, in social media, so it doesn't matter where, looks like professional bar, easy, it's easy to trust. So it means these skills again helps a lot to just to get this trust. I made a very um, uh, huge experience around the world and uh, I was working behind the different bars. Sometimes I even didn't understand what people talking about. So for example, it was in uh, Shanghai, it was in uh, Thailand when I don't understand the language. Yeah, So we just, uh, <laughs> we, were, we were talking like smiling and uh, by these movements. But anyway, I see that people trust me. Even I couldn't speak with them, yeah? so this is just a one way. And um, uh, according to my experience, is getting more and more as a competitive advantage. I mean, for example, here in Russia, even here in Russia, St. Petersburg, Moscow, especially, yeah? so many people ask me, so Vitaly, we need some skillful bartender, but it's not easy to find them here because all of them have very good job already. So that's why if I see my students getting very well with the, with the skills, then I easily recommend them to very good bars. And then most of the top bars, uh, El Capitas, my friends from Moscow, they always uh, bring in new commerce because we are talking again, not just about how to move it a lot, yeah, but just about understanding how to pour, yeah, how to pour uh, more elegant, how to pour uh, more healthy for yourself, at least, you yeah? know? So that's why uh, it becomes more and more around the world also as a competitive advantage. And I think you uh, feel it already as well. And uh, uh, after COVID time, 
trust me, 100%, those bartenders who are still in this industry, they will have tons of work. It's happening now as well, but later it will be just uh, like um, to find some gold, to find some bartender with good knowledge and good skills. Yeah, it actually happens already. Yeah. Uh -huh, our friend and do you know a training so it's another interesting part of uh, of the process uh, the training so actually is my favorite part of the of the process yeah so when we practice uh, i don't only practice the moment which i'm going to use behind the bar for example yeah easy movement so pam 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 we call it in italian la scala or stairs yeah so when we make three easy steps and I bring spoon to the storing glass and then I start to store it, yeah? So, pam, 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 pam. Yeah, this is the movement. But the exercise for this movement is quite interesting. So, this rotation of the bar spoon around fingers, yeah? It is a part, it is a part of the movement, but at the same time, it's very nice exercise. First of all, it's a huge impact on your brain. Then, okay, I start to do like this, and then I want to increase and make this uh, exercise as a cognitive skill, yeah? So, first of all, I can start with both hands. When I just start to practice, I use one by one. So, for example, right and then left, and then right, yes, so five, ten circles, and then left, five, ten circles, and then I start to use both hands, yeah? So, both hands together. Mm -hmm. Then, what I do next? So I want to make step forward, yeah? Then I do opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So practice with opposite direction. Not as easy probably as it seems, yeah? But still everybody can get it, trust me. Mm -hmm. So it's already a good exercise for your attention and concentration because when you start to do it, it's impossible to put your attention somewhere else or later when you practice a lot it, it becomes easier then for example yeah you start to do this movement yeah i call it black shark helicopter yeah so and you can make it like look or continuous yeah mm -hmm. so and then we can combine two of these movements mm -hmm. rotation around fingers and this black shark helicopter, yeah? And then again, I change, uh, don't need to change uh, <laughs> bar spoons, but I change this movement. Mm -hmm. On the left side, now I do this black shark helicopter. On the right side, I do this uh, rotation. So I'm not going to use it behind the bar. I'm not going to hypnotize someone with these two movements. Yeah, some, yeah, look at me, give me a phone, give me your money, la, la, la. So I'm not going to hypnotize someone. But again, it is a very nice cognitive exercise. Just try to do it in like five minutes. And I'm pretty sure that you will get a huge impact in your brain so you will feel uh, even tired after even five minutes of this exercise yeah because it takes a lot of energy to control and right and left uh, hands and as you see also in the picture the symmetric uh, trainings uh, synchronic and asynchronic yeah um, uh, they help us to develop connection between different parts of the brain so they always connect, but at the same time, sometimes they don't understand how to, how to make it easier. Yeah. So when we practice different exercises in both hands, it's quite good exercise for our brain as well. Yeah. So, um, uh, one of the things what I found as well is that kind of these exercises is a very nice dynamic meditation. So meditation is not just a process. Uh, I think uh, my friends from Nepal knows much better uh, than me. Yeah, what is meditation? But uh, it is not the process just uh, of uh, putting attention on your breathing. It is a process of putting attention on one process. Yeah. So when you practice with the spoon, when you put all attention there, it is also dynamic meditation. So running this kind of dynamic meditation. That's why actually your brain um, getting, um, how to say, it, uh, even sometimes happier. Yeah, there are neurotransmitters which helps us to become happier. But at the same time, when you 
put attention on one process, then during this period, different parts of your brain takes rest. So there is a myth, there is a myth that we use only 10% of our brain. Trust me and trust to neuroscience that it is impossible. We use all our brain. Yeah, probably not as much as we want, but all the brain works. And as usually, it's just working very hard. Yeah, so and uh, sometimes it also needs rest. So, for example, sleeping, it's a great rest. Yeah, but during the day, we also need, need the rest. Uh, that's why, for example, some meditating process during your training, when you put your concentration only on one process, it also create exercise. Yeah, but um, it became a meditation just when you when you've got this uh, when you've got this movement, yeah, or this exercise. So, for example, I don't put so much attention on this movement at the moment, yeah, because it is already in my cerebellum, yeah. So I can do different exercises in a different, yeah, hands, even uh, to create some, yeah. So for example, throwing catch, yeah, throwing catch, yeah, throwing catch. So. When I start to do some new exercises, I have to think about it, and it's already goes out from the meditative process. Yeah, so that's why those processes which is easy for you, they became as a meditating process. Yeah, so I hope you understand what I mean. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I hope everything is understandable at the moment. Uh, so we are over time, but if you have a time, we'll continue. Do you have a time? Do you still have a time? Show me a sign if you're ready to continue. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Let's play one game. Let's play one game. Uh -huh. This is alphabet, very easy. So you know all the letters here and we will play very easy game. So you can see there, there are two lines. One is uh, blue and another one is with white colors, yeah? So blue letters, they are, uh, it is just an alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F. Then next, next blue line is G, I, H, I, J, K, L. I, I, I hope you got it, yeah? Mm -hmm. So the next three with uh, blue and sometimes with red colored letters, uh, it will be a signal for us which hand we will lift up. So, for example, in this case, R will be a right hand, L will be a left hand, and B will be both hands. Capito? Mm -hmm. Mano destra, mano sinistra, and trump. Capito? <laughs> okay, fantastic. Yeah, so right hand, it means R, right hand. We lift up right hand. L means left hand. B means both, both hands. Even if you don't understand English, so it's still understandable. R, L, B, yeah? So, and we will use these two letters together. For example, the first step is A and R. So I pronounce A and lift up right hand. Then next step is B and L. I Continue with the left hand and pronounce B. The next step is C. Next step is D, then E, then F, G, H, I, and go forward, okay? So let's play this game. This is one, of, uh, before we start, trust me, this is one of the best cognitive exercise so we um, uh, we do this exercise every time before we start to practice because it activate your brain a lot we use different parts of our brain at the same time so actually it's a uh, quite demanding for brain just on the set what, what was going on there but let's let's get our experience so we'll go all together okay you are doing behind your screen and i will pronounce as well here okay so let's go all together a, B, C, D, E, and pronounce, pronounce, F, G, H, I, J, K, 
L M N O P Q R S T Q V W Good. So I feel that it wasn't so easy for you as well. Yeah. So, and sometimes even you can feel some irritation or even aggressiveness. It is quite fine because uh, this moment we uh, obtain or we collect different processes together to make just one task. And it's quite difficult for our brain. So when we, when our brain uh, becomes like our loaded, then this part of the brain inside, yeah, our limbic system, and actually the small part, the small part here, which calls amygdala, which is responsible, it is just in here, so uh, down there, yeah, so which is responsible for uh, our emotions. It tells you like, hey, 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 come on, come on. You are losing a lot of energy. You are losing a lot of power. Stop, stop it. So it brings some, some unpleasant emotions. So it asks you, please stop it. Don't do it. The same happening when we start to practice with uh, uh, this small movement. If you try to do this even jig rotation, yeah, when you rotate uh, spinning from uh, one finger to another yeah sometimes it takes a lot of energy and especially when you just started and if you haven't done it before and especially not with the right but with the left hand if you are right-handed person so then again there is the same process which amygdala tell you like hey, hey, hey come on come on stop it is too much energy for now so don't do it don't do it and then no no it's not for me so and then decision made so this process is happening every time that's why why i'm uh, talking about that when we practice with these bar skills we also practice with our psych emotional skills yeah because when you feel this irritation you understand now that amygdala bring you a signal to our nail cortex then hey, hey stop come on it's too much energy but you understand that this is just amygdala which trying to tell you that it is too difficult yeah so there are two ways how to behave. The first one, go to according our nature and stop it. Yes. Another way is to use your prefrontal cortex and tell to amygdala, okay, I understand. Probably I'm not the best, but let me try to do it. Let me continue and then go back there. Then our body always, always react on what's going on in our uh, brain. If there are some negative emotions, yeah, then there is some tension. So again, when you just understood it, take a small rest, probably shake it, or even make some stretching, and then it will help you to relax. And you go back to practicing. So every time when you feel tension, again, shake, Take a rest, yeah, then stretch it, and then it will be easy for you to get the skills. And trust me, guys, I had some uh, people who didn't even trust them. They can, they can move their little fingers. They can do this movement. But after three days, only three days, they did it almost like me. Maybe not too fast, but almost like me. Yeah. So even I had some people who had a real problem with the brain. So um, it was uh, a couple of students which had, um, um, how to say, it? Uh, not the brain stem, but um, uh, they had a problem like 70% of their brain didn't work. And for example, their small mobility was like, Mm, if they want to grab a spoon, it was like this, and they couldn't even use like this. After three days, we did this one, and I was crying when I saw it. Yeah, because if you understand how it works and why it works like this, yeah, then it's easier 
to get any skills, to be honest. So this is a psycho-emotional skills. We study a lot about it as well. And understanding of these processes, it is metacognitive skills. So we, uh, it is meta skills just, which helps us to understand how it works. Actually, all, uh, all the trainings uh, about um, uh, self-confidence or about how to control your emotions, it is all based on understanding how it works here in the brain. So you can use different techniques, you can use uh, different methods, but trust me, all of them based on understanding how it goes inside the brain. And if you understand more or less how it goes there, then it's easier for you to understand how to behave in this situation. For example, um, if I feel that uh, I'm aggressive, sometimes it happens, of course, I am human, I, uh, I can't stop my emotions. It comes to my brain, it comes to my understanding, but there is a difference the next step. Yeah. So if I understand my emotions, for example, I feel that I am irritated or I am aggressive and I don't want to make any conflict. So I'm trying just to stop the situation, go somewhere, let it go other way. For example, probably some exercises because I need to throw this energy or even just walking or even just sometimes, so few movements, yeah, just few movements. And then it goes by itself. I come back to conversation and then it's easier. Sometimes when we have some conflict with my wife, on the peak of this conflict, I'm talking like, okay, give me five, two minutes, I will come back. And I go there, breathing, probably sometimes even exercises, push-ups, and then I go back and I think already different. Two minutes ago, I was ready to kill her, yeah? And now I'm, I love her again. This is our life. It depends just only uh, on our habits, it, and it depends only on how we understand what's going on there. It's impossible to control emotions, but it is possible to move it to one side or another side. Yeah, again, it just exercises and that's all. So alphabet is one of the good ways how to exercise it, yeah? So what is psycho-emotional skills? Or um, uh, another way we can um, call it as emotional intelligence, yeah? First of all, understanding of your emotions and reactions. Actually, in my opinion, it should be a school program. So. I mean that um, during our uh, school time when we are just uh, very young, so it's great when somebody teach us about our emotions. So for example, explain uh, to children why he behaved like this. Probably he got some fear, uh, fear, yeah? Probably he was aggressive because of some situation. That's why you make this decision now. So, and every time explain, explain, explain. So then later when we became older, we already understand how to mm, communicate with others in a positive way. I mean, in more constructive way, yeah? So because emotions doesn't mean something bad. It is just way how we uh, communicate and we always will communicate with emotions. But if you understand more or less how it works inside, then it's easy to communicate in a more positive, in, um, in more um, constructive way, yeah? So the second, the second step is managing of your emotions. So when you understand that this is anger, then you can stop yourself yeah, give you a couple of minutes, breathing exercise or some movements, and then go back to conversation or thinking. And you can see that it's already different, different uh, thoughts there inside, yeah? So, and um, uh, especially for those who are trying to control emotions of other people, uh, as a neuropsychologist and, uh, and just a psychologist, I can tell that it is impossible. We can influence, but we never know what will be the reaction of other person. Yes, we're trying to, to manage some, uh, some, some other people, but according to my experience, and think, I think you have the same experience, it is impossible to control. So, because you never know what is there inside. Yeah, that's why we can just um, think about like, okay, Probably it will be like this. Yeah, probably, but we never know what will be in the final. And, um, but it's still possible to understand emotions of other people and their reaction. And uh, even sometimes they tell you something very, very ir um, 
arrogant, yeah, so or maybe something crude. And uh, for example, after some years of practicing, I stopped to judge these people. So I know that they have fear. I know that they they have probably anger. So that's why they're talking in this rude way. And I just leave it later. We go back to conversation and I ask, hey, do you really think so? And like, no, no, sorry, sorry, and that's all. So, but at the same time, during this emotional talking, we can make some decision that I will never talk with him again. So, and just remember that this is emotional reaction without understanding of the processes what's going on in his brain. Yeah, so more or less we can understand it and it also it is also a skill it is already as a social uh, social intelligence yeah and um, in the end it should be like managing of emotions of other people but i want to tell like this uh, for me it is creating relationship yeah uh, creating a friendship uh, creating some collaboration this is much better than just to try ju just trying to control other emotions because it will never bring you something positive back this is life experience and this is a never experience. So, and um, from the our brain side, I would, I would like to explain what's going on there. So let me, oh no, you don't see it. Okay, so the red part, the red part of our brain, which is a limbic brain, yeah, mm, uh, which more or less uh, re responsible for our emotions, yeah. If we go on the emotion, and emotional, which there are a lot of emotions inside, yeah, then all the energy goes there in this red part, yeah, so all the energy goes here, and this part decides what to do, there's a very straight way to the neocortex, yeah, it gives signals to neocortex, okay, you have to protect yourself, like go faster, blah, 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 so, but, but you don't control it, you don't control your thoughts, you just go by itself according to your uh, previous experience and to your habits, yeah? So I think it happens with you a lot of times, many times. So it happens with me many times as well, yeah. But then when you understand that this part of the brain works, it's impossible to control it, but I can correct this part. So blue one on the screen, neocortex, yeah? So this understanding gives you an opportunity to, um, to change your decision. Just because you understand, you understand that when I am on the emotions, this red part, limbic brain, which uh, which comes to us from uh, animals, yeah, we couldn't control it. So uh, we are only um, we are only uh, uh, objects or subjects on the planet which can understand what we, we what we are doing, and we can be responsible for our movements and for our behavior. So animals uh, can't do it. So that's why it's your choice uh, whom to be uh, during your life, yeah? And that's why when we're talking about crowbar skills, uh, I can explain why it is mind, body, and emotions, because with practicing just easy skills, but any skills which you can use behind the bar later, yeah, the different techniques to grip the jigger or the different techniques to use your uh, shaker or to grab your shaker, we can study a lot about our body itself, about our thoughts, about our um, behavior, about our um, uh, perception. So uh, there are uh, two very important, very important uh, moments which everybody have to know. Just remember about it. Uh, very important properties of our brain, yeah? First of all, it is, uh, how to say it in English, uh, just let me remember. Neuroplasticity, neuroplasticity. So our brain changing every moment and only you can control how it will be changed. If you don't think about it, then it will be changed just occasionally, just under control of someone. And trust me, so this is what's going on in the political way, this is what's going on in our everyday life, so I think you understand what I mean. So neuroplasticity, uh, it, is a, um, uh, uh, it is a skill which, uh, which can be changed during the older life. 
I mean, you can always change your brain. So before uh, there were some uh, scientists who was talking that only till 25, our brain yeah, still constructing and um, uh, after 25, stop, yeah? Then it just like kind of dying, <laughs> not like this. Till the end of the days, it's still changing, changing, changing. And you can always have some improvements and uh, uh, have some good benefits from your practicing, yeah? The second, the second skill is, mm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, let me remember in English, uh, Nero, uh, Neuro reserve. So it means a cognitive reserve. Yeah. So it means during our life, we, uh, we reserve some skills for the future when we became older. So I think you know that we have a uh, huge problem around the world now as a uh, dementia, yeah, as uh, Alzheimer. So, and it happens uh, more and more often because people uh, start to live longer, but uh, people start to. Uh, to use less, much less their hands. Most of the um, most of the uh, homework became automatic, and we don't need to think a lot about it. Yeah, mostly we have to think about how to survive and how to live, how to earn money. Yeah, and uh, we forgot about this part. We forgot about the uh, physical exercises. Uh, sometimes we forget about talking with other people uh, or be social because it's also always a brain work. So, and um, uh, cognitive reserve is one of the uh, very nice skill which we can uh, cons uh, construct or which we can create during our young time, yeah? Uh, during our young age. So it doesn't matter what age you are, create, you always collect a cognitive reserve to use it later when you will be older. So it's not easy to think when we, when we are young because you want to jump, you want to go to the party. And as for me, it was quite the same, but I didn't have even this knowledge. And um, only last year, it was proved by scientists that uh, neurons, neurons can be uh, regenerated. So before we knew that it is impossible, but now we knew that it is possible that we can regenerate new neurons. This is amazing knowledge because actually it means that uh, if, you, if you use your brain every time, because it is like a muscles, yeah? If you use your muscles, you will be um, not the same, but uh, it helps you to stay healthier during your life. So the same about the brain. If you use your brain in a more correct way, if you understand how it works, if you make some exercise for it, yeah, doesn't matter even uh, even good exercise with your fingers, yeah, uh, and with your hands. So it's great exercise just to save your brain healthy. So that's why uh, every time when you practice, just remember that you don't only practice to be the best button in the world, but also you train your brain. Yeah. So a kind of mind fitness is a very uh, great benefit what we have from uh, bartending. So as for me, for example, I'm 35 years old, but I still looks more or less, yeah, more or less normal. So I still have a good one. Yeah, so I'm still fits very well. But uh, before, when I saw someone who is 35, I was thinking like, wow, it is a daddy already. Yeah, so, and uh, what bartending makes with the people, as I see that uh, we, we stay younger for a long time. So probably just because of alcohol, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's not just because of alcohol. Yeah, the small amount of alcohol is uh, even even good for the body, probably. Yeah, so for the male, it, it's still fine. But when it's uh, too much, it, it also has some impact. But as I know exactly that these exercises really helps you to stay even younger here inside. So guys, I hope it was interesting talking for today. I hope you've got some new knowledge and probably even some small motivation to practice. Yeah. So uh, we are starting today with our online course. Tomorrow, we'll, uh, the first lesson will be open. And uh, I wish to my students 
to uh, enjoy this process. First of all, enjoy. It doesn't matter if you do it very well or if it takes more time to get the skills. Doesn't matter. Just enjoy it. And every time, every time when you grab your jigger, remember that you improve your brain or your mind skills, your cognitive skills, and actually you can play with your psycho-emotional skills. I will tell more about uh, this during next uh, uh, seminars. Uh, I think for today is enough. Thank you so much. If you have some questions also, yeah, uh, let me check our chat. If you have some questions, uh, so you can, you can write me a message. Okay. Do, do you see on the screen my contacts? Do you see on the screen my contacts? Yep. Okay, fantastic. So uh, you can see on the screen my contacts. And uh, if you want to ask any question, you can write me. I will explain probably even, uh, even uh, in the stories in Instagram, so to everyone, yeah, uh, because probably it will help to other people as well. So thanks so much, and let's get it started. If someone wants to join us as well, we still have few spots, uh, I think four spots, um, but to tomorrow we start. Thanks so much, guys. Have a nice time, have a great job, and I hope that this COVID time will finish soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. 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 